This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Okay, uh, we're going to look at interest rate swaps, which uh, is in the chapter in the course notes on interest rate risk management, um, the second of the two chapters. And to explain what's happening, have a look at example one. In example one, it says company X can borrow at a fixed rate of 10% or at a floating rate of LIBOR uh, plus 3%. Company Y can borrow at a fixed rate of 12% or floating uh, LIBOR plus 65 And the floating rates as LIBOR, as the official rate, moves up and down, um, so too do the rates that they'll have to pay. Company X wishes to borrow at fixed rate. I'm not really concerned why, but they want to borrow fixed. Whereas company Y wishes to borrow floating. Now that's fine. If they borrowed, uh, did their own borrowing, forget anything you may know or not know about swaps. If they did their own borrowing, then company X wants to borrow at fixed. They'd pay, where are we, 10%. Company Y wishes to borrow floating, and they'd pay, where are we, LIBOR plus six and a half percent. Incidentally, before I go any further, you may wonder why, however, uh, Y borrows, they're having to pay more than X would have to pay. You know, at fixed, they pay 12 as against X is 10, at floating, LIBOR plus six and a half as against LIBOR plus three. Well, surely that's Quite normal, it depends on the company's credit rating. Company X presumably has a better credit rating, they can borrow at lower rates. However, that's if they did their own borrowing. And in total, if we assume they're borrowing the same amounts, you know, they both want to borrow perhaps a million, then overall, the total interest being paid, 10% plus LIBOR plus 6.5% is what? LIBOR plus 16.5%. I've just added the two together. Well, essentially, what swap borrowing involves is instead of X borrowing fix, which is what they want, and Y borrowing LIBOR, uh, floating, which is what they want, suppose they borrow the opposite. You'll see what I mean in a second. So X, instead of borrowing fixed for the moment, suppose they took out a loan at floating. They'd have to pay LIBOR plus 3%. Uh, y, although they want floating, suppose instead they borrowed at fixed, they'd pay 12%. And although we couldn't stop there, and that's not what they want, obviously, but it would mean that in total, Instead of paying LIBOR plus 16 and a half, in total LIBOR plus 3 plus 12, LIBOR plus 15%. That in total, they'd be paying, what is it? There'd be a saving of 1.5%. And what they could do is simply borrow the opposite of what they need which is what I've written down, but then effectively pay each other's interest. So X negotiates the loan at floating, Y arranges the loan at fixed, but then they pay each other's interest. So X ends up paying 12%, Y ends up paying LIBOR plus 3%, and again, because in total they're paying LIBOR plus 15, they've saved one and a half. Now, all right, they have saved, but of course there is no way on earth that X would allow it to stay like that, because X could have borrowed themselves at 10, and if we stop there, they're ending up paying 12. Uh, and Y, Y is making a huge saving, obviously. If we stop there, they're paying LIBOR plus three instead of LIBOR plus six and a half. And so all we have to do is, in a sense, settle up between them. There is a saving to be made, but if we stop where we are, Y is saving 3.5%, X is losing 2 
and so will share the saving between them. There's one and a half percent to be made in total. If we assume they agree to share that saving equally, then they'll each share half of that, 0.75 percent. And in the exam, assume that unless you're told differently. You know, if you were told X was going to get 80% of the saving and Y 20%, no problem. 80% of one and a half, 20% of one and a half. Uh, but since the question said nothing different, we'll assume we want them both to say the same. How are we going to achieve it? Now watch me very carefully. You can set this up in different ways. But just watch. At the moment, after swapping, I hope you'd agree that if you follow me so far, X will be paying 12 LIBOR, uh, sorry, Y LIBOR plus 3. But what do we want them to pay? Now this is the bit to make sure you get. We want each of them to, sh uh, to save 0.75%. Now X, remember, wants to borrow fixed. If they borrow themselves, they'll pay 10 we found a way of saving them money, and so we want them to end up paying seven and a half percent. Uh, sorry, point seven five percent less. Nine point two five. If we end up with that result, then for X we've achieved the objective. Own oh, borrowing, they pay ten. Here. Get that saving. They only paid 9.25. They're happy. What about Y? If Y did its own borrowing, it would be LIBOR plus 6.5. And, and they want to borrow floating, remember. But we're saying they can save 0.75. And so the end result that we want is that they pay LIBOR plus 6.5 less the saving of 0.75. Which comes to what? LIBOR plus oh, 6.5 minus 0.75 is 5.75. That's what we want to end up with. Now, how can we achieve it? Stop as we are, having swapped, and X would be paying. Remember, these are outflows, the payments, they'd be paying 12. We want them only to be paying 9.25. Stop here. And why be paying LIBOR plus th uh, uh, 3? We want them to be paying LIBOR plus 5.75. How can we end up with it? We'll get Y to pay the difference. If Y pays out an extra 2.75%, then Y will end up paying 5.75. And if they pay that to X, what will happen? X will receive 2.75. And so they'll be paying out 12, receiving 2.75, and net 9.25. Now, as I say, we can set it up different ways. Um, I'll explain later how differently we could set it. It doesn't matter. Uh, what your examiner wants is for you to explain how they can make a saving and to show what the end result is. Have a think about that and have a go at example two yourself. I mean, I'll carry on the lecture and do example two. Uh, but it would be as well, seriously, see, see if you can cope with it, pause the uh, lecture, look back if you need, when you think you're happy, have a go at example two, exactly the same sort of idea, but with different figures. Anyway, I'll carry on, let's do example two. This time it's A and B. If they do their own borrowing, Companies A income fluctuates with interest rates. 
don't know why, but if their income goes up and down, as uh, interest goes up and down, it would make sense that any borrowing, that they borrow floating as well. So as their income goes up and down with interest, their expense, their interest goes up and down with interest, A, sensibly, a borrow floating. And if they borrow themselves, they'd pay LIBOR plus 1%. B's doesn't fluctuate with interest. And so the implication, it's not a rule, but the implication, if that's in the question, is that they prefer to borrow fixed. They'd prefer to borrow fixed, which would be 11%. And so if we forget any swap, it would mean that in total, they were paying LIBOR plus 12. Let's look at swap borrowing. If they borrowed the opposite and paid each other's interest, then what would happen? Uh, if A borrowed fixed, it would be 10%. If uh, B borrowed floating, it would be LIBOR plus one and a half. And if they paid each other's interest, A would end up paying LIBOR plus one and a half percent. B would end up paying 10. And so in total, between them, they'd be paying LIBOR plus 11 and a half. And although, like before, we're going to have to settle up between them, it would mean there's a saving to be made overall of half a percent. And because we're not told any different, you would assume they were going to share it equally. So half to each. 0.25% each. And so what we need to do is decide what will they end up paying. So again, I always work backwards. And I say, right, A would have paid LIBOR plus one. We want them to end up saving uh, 0.25, so LIBOR plus one less the saving, we want them to end up paying LIBOR plus 0.75. If that's, if we can end up with that result, uh, A is, is then happy. Similarly, B, uh, they would have been paying 11 if they did their own borrowing. We want them to save 0.25%. Ten point seven five. So that's what we want to end up with. And again, for the exam, that's the important bit. I mean, last time it was asked, that's really all you wanted, that final answer. Now, how can they achieve it? Well, if they pay each other's interest at the moment, A is paying LIBOR plus one and a half. We only want them to be paying LIBOR plus 0.75. B is paying 10. We want them to be paying 10.75. And so the difference, B needs to pay an extra 7.5 and they'll pay, uh, B will pay that to A. So A will receive 0.75. It's in brackets because remember all these otherwise are interests payable. So A ends up paying LIBOR plus one and a half but receiving from B 0.75 they end up paying a net LIBOR plus 0.75. Now I've said a couple of times for both examples, um, it's really the end result that the examiner has been after recently. Uh, I'd better just mention one other thing to be safe. If this is what you might call a private arrangement, you know, company A, company B, both want to borrow similar amounts, they get together, well, they can settle up any way they like. That's what they'll end up paying, assuming they've agreed to share the saving equally. Now, you can arrange swaps through a bank, you know, rather than have to find another company yourself. More commonly, you'd go to the bank, you'll say, we want to borrow a million. You'll ask them to arrange swap borrowing and they'll find Oh, but there are other companies on the books that simply want to do a swap. And although the end result would be the same, uh, they quote it slightly differently. So exactly the same example, 
Remember, if we did swap a page that has interest, they'd be paying LIBOR plus one and a half uh, and ten. But the way it works, if you're doing it through a bank, is this. Start again. If they do their own borrowing, it's LIBOR plus twelve. Swap borrowing, they borrow the opposite of what they need. So A pays 10, B pays uh, a LIBOR plus one and a half. There's that savings we made of half a percent, 0.25 each. And so again, this bit doesn't change. The end result um, is A pays LIBOR plus 0.75. They've saved that quarter of a percent. Similarly, B. However, stop there and again uh, two problems if we stop um, immediately they've forget swapping for the minute if we stop immediately borrow the opposite I mean clearly that's ridiculous A is paying 10% fixed which you don't want we want to end up with LIBOR plus seven and a half and so the way the bank arranges it will say two things they'll say okay you pay they'll say to A you pay us LIBOR So you're now paying LIBOR plus 10. And the bank will say, in return, we'll pay you, so you'll receive 9.25%. Now think about that. From A's point of view, they've borrowed at 10 fixed. They're receiving nine and a quarter percent from the bank, so a net 0.75 fixed, but they're paying LIBOR to the bank, and so they end up in total LIBOR plus 0.75. And similarly to B. B, at the moment, they borrowed the opposite of what they want, they're paying LIBOR plus one and a half. And we want to end up with them paying 10.75. So the bank will make them a similar offer, but in reverse. The bank will say to them, we'll give you LIBOR. So they receive LIBOR. And so the net so far is one and a half percent. And the bank say in return, B will have to pay them one and a half to 9.25. And so this time, instead of paying each other the amounts, because they're doing it through a bank, each of them borrows the opposite of what they actually wanted, and then do a swap with the bank. Uh, a pays the bank LIBOR and receives 9.25 fixed. B pays the bank 9.25 fixed and receives LIBOR. Uh, we call it a LIBOR to 9.25% swap. Now that doesn't confuse, uh, again, uh, the current examiner, when he's asked it recently, that's ra been rather irrelevant. He's not asked you to show how it's achieved. He's wanted the, uh, the final result. Um, and I hope I've made that clear.